In this video, we'll be making a digital clock which displays the hour and minute, date and month, year and day of the week in a loop. We will be using a PIC18 F252 microcontroller and RTC module. First, let's see the circuit setup. Before going through the connections, just make sure that you know how to program the PIC18 F252 with the PIC-K3 module. If you don't know how the connections are done, please check our previous video. Now, as you can see, the blue connections that we are indicating here are for the four digit seven segment display. And these pins are labeled like this on the device. And you can see the connections to our microcontroller that are indicated here. For example, RA0 is connected to pin 12 of the seven segment display and etc. Actually, our previous video also covers this section as well. So if we go through the RTC module, we will have our VCC connected to 5 volts. The ground is going to be connected to common ground. The clock pin is going to be connected to RB1 on our microcontroller. The data pin will be connected to the RB0 on the microcontroller. And the reset or the CE pin is going to be connected to the RB2 pin on the microcontroller. And in the next section that we will be programming the microcontroller with the MPLAB XID, you are going to see that we are going to be using the RB4 pin for a specific purpose. So when the RB4 will be connected to VCC, we will be able to load the values to the RTC module. Once the RB4 is not connected to the VCC, then we will be able to read the values from the RTC module in a loop. So no need to indicate that our VDD is going to be connected to VCC 5 volts and the VSS is going to be connected to the common ground. But make sure that while programming the microcontroller, just get the VCC from the Picket 3 module. And after the programming, you can use the common 5 volt power supply. Now let's see our circuit on the breadboard and then we will jump to MPLAB XID for programming in C. Now let's take a look at our connections on the breadboard. As you can see, we are getting the 5 volts from the 5 volt regulator into the breadboard. And we have our PK3 connected as we did in our previous example. And the four digit seven segment display is also connected the same way as we did in the previous video. And we have our uh, high speed crystal here connected to the ground over the 22 picofarad uh, capacitors. And let's see our RTC module. You can see that we have the VCC and ground connected to the breadboard. And the three pins clock data reset are connected to our microcontroller as shown in the previous diagram. Okay, if you take a look at our code, you are going to see that all the configuration bits are the same as our previous example. And so nothing is changing there. We have our crystal frequency set to 16 megahertz. And then we are defining the read and write addresses for the RTC module. And then we are defining some functions that we are using in the main function. And we are defining some arrays here. We also have the numbers underscore common and for the display. Here we have an array actually which displays D, A and Y. And we have our digit array, uh, which we are using for sending these characters or letters to the four digit seven segment. Again, we are defining some arrays here, some integers. And in the main loop, you can see that first, we are setting the port A and port B to output. However, in port B, we are setting RB4 as input. We are going to see how this is going to work for us. And the C port is also being set as output. And we are setting let A and let C to zero initially. Here you can see some pieces of the code that I had written for MSP430. So what I did was just to get the code for the MSP430, paste it here, and then change whatever is necessary actually those are mainly the port numbers, port directions, etc. And now what I'm doing here is checking if the RB4 bit, which was an input bit that I had set, is set to high voltage or not. So if it's connected to VCC, it's going to perform 
these lines. So let's see what these lines are. Actually, these are related with writing to the RTC. So we are setting the RTC values here, date, month, hour, etc. First, we disable write protect, and then we set the trickle charging mechanism, and then we set the seconds, minute, hour, date, month, day, which is going to be between one and seven. So you are going to set, for example, one to Monday. This is our year register, and then I'm again enabling the rack protect. So if RB4 is set to VCC, so it's con if it's connected to VCC, these will be done. If it's not connected to VCC, so it's our else here, we are going to have a while one loop, so an infinite loop, which is going to read all of the values of the RTC in a loop. And then it's going to do some calculations. Actually, first we are defining the clock data arrays values to these integers that we had set previously. And then we are having these calculations for the arrays, like this is for array of seconds, for array of minutes, array of hour, etc. And what we are doing here is very simple. We are dividing the value to 16. So that is going to give us the first digit of the seconds and the remainder is going to give us the second digit of the seconds. You can uh, try to check it yourself. After all these calculations, I try to display the time, the date and the month and the day of the week and also the year one after the other. So I could use a timer of the microcontroller itself, but probably it wouldn't be very effective. That's why I decided to use the timer that I have in the RTC. Actually, it's not the timer, but I have the seconds, right? So I used the seconds in order to display the content of the RTC. So if the seconds are like 0, 1, 2, or 10, 11, 12, 20, 21, 22, then we are going to see the hour and the minute on the display. And in the next three seconds, we are going to see the date and month. And then after that, we are going to see the year. And then we are going to see the day of the week, saying that it's day one, two, three, or whatever it is. Okay, and these are the functions that we are using in order to write byte, read byte, and etc. If you would like to see the details of these, we can just check our previous video that we had done for the MSP430 and RTC. So now let's see how we are going to set the values of the RTC. So I want it to be synchronized with my laptop. So I'm going to open the watch. I would like to set it to 15, 14, for example, because I need some time to compile and load it on the microcontroller. I'm going to save it. I'm going to build it. By the way, all the other values are already set. I mean, it's the 25th of August and it's Wednesday and the year is 2021. So let's load it on the microcontroller. It's going to be loaded on the microcontroller. However, it's not going to be setting the RTC because our RB4 is not connected to VCC yet. So now the program is loaded to the microcontroller. I'm going to disconnect this picket and from the breadboard as well. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this RB4 connection ready to VCC. And in order to synchronize, I'm going to connect the microcontroller to the power at exactly 1540. And then I will immediately disconnect RB4 from VCC. Okay. So I believe the values are already set and we are more or less synchronized. So we are, or maybe we are just a couple of seconds late. So let's see if we are synchronized at 15.15. Okay, great. So it's 15.15 and we are synchronized with our laptop. So you can see that 
we are seeing these values starting from the hour and minute and then date and month and the year and then day of the week which is wednesday okay so we are having this cycle in 10 seconds and the good thing of the rtc module is that as you can see it has a battery on it so if we disconnect the power from the whole circuit let's see what happens okay let's leave it for a couple of seconds for example and then connect the power again you can see that the values are already kept in the rtc so what we can do is we can disconnect the rtc module it's still getting the data from the rtc because it has the battery on it so it doesn't make a change we can try one more thing we can disconnect this voltage regulator and we can have this power bank and we can connect its output to the breadboard let's do it okay you can see that the clock is still ticking let's say and the values are still valid we are at 15 17 date month they are all the same this was the end of the video. I hope it's been useful for you. If you have any questions or comments, please write them in the comment section. Thank you for watching and see you in another video.